consider what happened this week. We are seeing behaviour from elements of the Yes camp that is simply deplorable, even by the Australian left's low standards. On Outsiders on Sunday morning, Indigenous advocate Warren Mundine spoke about being driven to the brink of suicide by the racially charged abuse he has caught from Yes advocates. He showed rare courage in speaking candidly about what he has endured and what he contemplated but the response from some on the left was nothing short of vile. Let's first listen to what Warren had to say. It was a, a constant thing for about three months. Every mm. day I got up and that's how I thought about it. And I planned it. I planned it uh, twice to do it. It was over a 20 metre drop at the back of my house. And so I went out and I was going to throw myself over and, and I just laid in the rain thinking about it. And, uh, and I thought about my family and I thought, well, this would really affect my family if I did this. And so I laid there for a few hours before I calmed down and that. Another time I, was, I got off the plane in Sydney and just walked straight into the office and I was going to go to the 30th, 30th floor and, and just throw myself off. Uh, but again, I, I thought about my family. I thought about, uh, you know, what that would do to them. And, and I stopped myself. It took enormous courage for Warren Mundine to share that, and no doubt it will help others struggling with suicidal thoughts. Now, one would hope that after seeing that, the Yes Advocates would back off, I don't know, express some sympathy, or at the very least, opt for a period of silence. But that is not what happened. Some of those who pride themselves on being morally superior and on the right side of history doubled down on the attacks against Mundine. This is just a small sample and they weren't all random Twitter trolls. There was also this from ABC regular Paul Bongiorno who tweeted, this is transparent, blatant politics, hardly worth a second of sympathy. Only the gullible and opportunistic racists will fall for it. The callousness and cruelty is quite astonishing. To think like that is bad enough, but how rotten to actually write it down and post it on social media for everyone, including Warren, to see, and Warren did see that. It's clear that the race-based referendum is exposing the true colours of some on the left. They began the debate by smearing their opponents as racist while simultaneously playing the victim. But in the past week, they have sunk to new lows. And talking about new lows, today's Herald Sun front page says it all. Worst bloke. The ex-partner of former PM Julia Gillard sucked on a woman's nipple in a drunken sexual assault. Lawyers for Tim Matheson, that's the hairdresser who became Australia's first bloke, have told Melbourne Magistrates Court that he would plead guilty to one sexual assault charge committed in March 2022. The Herald Sun reports that Matheson was charged with three offences in May this year by the Sexual Offences Squad, but the two other charges were subsequently withdrawn. What has taken many people by surprise is that the 66-year-old may be eligible for a diversion which could mean that after an apology or perhaps a donation to a charity, he would escape a conviction and no finding of guilt would be recorded against him, despite the guilty plea. We'll be keeping a close eye on how this case concludes.